used to cost a nickel. And a bus ride only used to cost a dime. Lots of luck. Them days can be forgotten. The world has gotten rotten. Lots of luck. Lots of luck. Lots of luck. Every day is getting tougher. And it keeps on getting rougher. A dollar isn't even worth the half a buck. So in order to survive, just to keep yourself alive, what you really need today is... Lots of luck. 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 Arthur, you sure you don't want that dinner? I told you no. Did you hear that, Mom? Now we don't want to eat. I knew it. He's sick. From what? He don't do nothing. <laughs> well, maybe just thinking about getting a job last week put too much of a strain on him. <laughs> My poor Arthur. Hiya, kid. Hi, Stanley. Hiya, Ma. Hello, Stanley. How are you? I'm fine, Ma. I got dessert. Chocolate donuts. Oh, we got dessert. Yeah, what? Trones. <laughs> Ma, give me a break. I got a long subway ride in the morning. Who's not eating? Arthur. Arthur? Thank you. <laughs> Stanley, that is mean. Stanley, your own sister tells you her husband ain't eating, and you don't think to ask her why? I mean, something terrible could have happened here. You don't know what. I mean, Arthur has never missed a meal here. And, and suddenly you don't ask why? Okay, I'm sorry. Why? If she knew, don't you think she'd tell you? Hey, Ma, you're busting my brains. I just came home. I know you did. How are you, Stanley? I'm fine, Ma. That's nice. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> No, it ain't. That's somebody making believe he's Arthur. That person is wearing clean clothes. The Arthur I know usually wears a bathrobe that he generously shares with a swarm of flies. Hey, I don't have to take that from you. Why not? Just take everything else. Arthur, are you sure you don't want no dinner? I ain't got no time. I gotta get to the clinic tonight. Oh, you want a donut? No, I ain't hungry. I'll see you later. <laughs> You see, Stanley? See what? He told you why he's not eating. He's going to the clinic. Stanley, he usually goes to the clinic once a month. This is the third time already this week. So maybe they're having a special on Sam. <laughs> he didn't even take a donut. Did you ever know him to refuse chocolate? Well, now, Olive, how could he tell us chocolate? It's in the bag. Mom, Arthur can smell chocolate through lead. <laughs> it's his condition. He's getting worse. Who knows? He could even be dying. How could Arthur die? He has never used his body for anything. <laughs> okay, Stanley. If he is not sick, why is he practically living at the clinic? Same reason he's living here. It's free. <laughs> Must you hurt, Stanley? Now, we are Arthur's only family, and if he is that sick, we should know about it. Why don't you just ask him? I did, last night in bed. And? And nothing. Another night of nothing. <laughs> Stanley, I want you to go to the phone, call the clinic, and ask Dr. Pincus about Arthur's condition. How come Olive don't do it? Because Olive is shy, and she don't want to hear no details about Arthur's body. Hey, I'm with her. <laughs> Stanley, call. Ma! Phew. Do I have a son, or don't I have a son? You have a son. Is my son going to call the doctor, or isn't he going to call the doctor? He going to call the doctor. <laughs> You're a real good son, Stanley. Yeah, a real pain in the neck, Ma. <laughs> Here's the number. This better be pretty serious. 
Otherwise, I'm going to make it very serious for Arthur. Ah, <laughs> uh, hello, Dr. Pincus, please. There's two Dr. Pincuses? <laughs> no, I don't want the ear, nose, and throat, man. <laughs> I want the lower down, Dr. Pincus. <laughs> He's coming. Hello, uh, Dr. Pinkett. This is Arthur Swan's brother-in-law. And I was wondering if you can give me any information about uh, his condition. You know, without violating the hypocritical oath. Uh-huh. 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 Thank you very much, Doctor. Uh-huh. Did he tell you anything? Uh-huh. Oh, what? Is it serious? It's more serious than you think. <gasps> Our friend Arthur has not been to the clinic in three weeks. <laughs> three weeks? Uh-huh. <laughs> then where is he going every night? Who knows? Maybe the National Convention of Deadbeats. <laughs> Why is he lying to me? There could only be one explanation. He's got another woman! Another woman? Arthur? <laughs> oh. oh, you just don't think he would do that? No, I don't think she would do that. <laughs> There's one thing I just don't understand. Why, Stanley? Why? You're a man. He's got me. Why? Would he look elsewhere? Don't hurt, Stanley. Just don't hurt. Welcome home, Cinderella. What are you doing up? I'm your fairy godmother, and I'm here to make sure your face turns into a pumpkin. <laughs> what do you mean? Where you been? Where I been? Oh. Well, in the first place, it's none of your business. In the second place, I told you before I went. And in the third place... And the third place is your mouth, and if you don't start talking, it's going to stop bleeding. <laughs> I already told you, I went down to the clinic to see my doctor. Oh, that's right, the clinic. I almost forgot. Dr. Pincus. I called Dr. Pincus. He says you wasn't there. I wasn't there? Right. Uh, wait a minute. You must have spoke to the wrong man. You see, there are two Dr. Pincuses. I know there's two Dr. Pincuses. An upper Pincus and a lower Pincus. <laughs> and you go to the lower Pincus because that's where your brains are. Then I sense a certain irritation in your voice. Would you mind telling me what you're talking about? I'm talking about Olive. My sister, my own flesh and blood. More flesh than blood, maybe, but nevertheless, she's my sister. And if you do something to hurt her, I'm going to give you back such a hurt. I'll take your head and I'll twist it around. You'll be able to look in your own back pocket. Get away from me, Stan. I learned karate in the Navy. My hands are a lethal weapon. So's your breath. What's the matter? What's the matter? What's going on? Me and Arthur are having a little chat. Oh, hello, Arthur. Where were you tonight? I was at the clinic. Oh, really? Well, it just so happens that we called the clinic tonight. Oh, you mean you were spying on your own husband? That's what you call spying, Arthur? A woman who's worried about your life when she should be trying to put an end to it? <laughs> yes, Arthur. What I did was out of caring and tenderness and worry and fear and concern and anxiety and despair and grief. And she only promised to love, honor, and obey. She threw in a lot of extras. <laughs> You were sick. Oh, the tears I have shed. What tears? I guess you didn't notice that every morning my pillow was wet. I noticed it, but I thought you were sleeping with your mouth open again. You know how worried Olive was? She thought that you found out that you were sick and was going to die without telling anybody. That would have been very selfish, keeping good news like that to yourself. <laughs> Okay. Okay. You're right. I ain't been seeing Dr. Pincus. Huh? And you want to know why? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because I've been seeing a different doctor. A 
specialist. A specialist? In what? Uh, spleen. Spleen? Spleen. That's right. This past month, I've had constant spleen pain right here. Every time I raise my arm. Oh, Arthur, why didn't you say something? Well, I didn't want to worry you. Oh, but you must always tell me. I mean, one night I might have rolled over in bed and touched it. Yeah, well, just to be safe, stay on your side of the bed and don't touch anything. <laughs> I don't even think she knows where anything is. Stanley, I don't like to hear that kind of talk in my house. Arthur, why don't you just come upstairs and I'll tuck you into bed? It's a good idea. My spleen is pooped. Arthur, how do you cure it? Well, the doctor said I should get plenty of sleep, eat three square meals a day, and don't do any work. You don't need a doctor. You can get that kind of advice from a hobo. Now, Stanley, I think we should sympathize with Arthur with this whatchamacallit kicking up. Oh, come on, Ma. You don't really believe that. Why not? Well, because I never heard of anybody having a pain in their spleen. <laughs> Did you ever see a TV commercial about a spleen? <laughs> not you mention it, no. You can bet that if anybody's having pain in their spleen, Ed McMahon would be selling you something for it. <laughs> you got something there, Stanley. And another thing, do you even know where the spleen is? No, I don't. Well, you can bet it ain't here. For sure. I never heard of a guy going to a specialist for his armpits. <laughs> Stanley, what's this plane for? I mean, what's it do? I don't know, but if it's in Arthur, it don't do nothing. <laughs> well, if a spleen ain't kicking up, what do you think it is? I think his hormones are making a comeback. <laughs> Which ones? I tell you, Mom, but you don't like that kind of talk in your house. Them spleen treatments must really be working. Arthur's got his appetite back. That's a good sign. Just like with the animals. When they're sick, they don't eat. How are we going to get Arthur hoof and mouth disease? a nice game of pinochle tonight. Oh, that would be fun. How about it, Arthur? Don't ask him till he gets his head out of the trough. <laughs> I can't play. I gotta go back to the clinic tonight. You going out? How come you're wearing your bathrobe? I don't want to spill food on my clothes. Why don't you just get a body bib? <laughs> Gee, Arthur, I thought you were through with the clinic. Well, you see... We got these relapses. The doctor says, if you don't watch it, you can become impudent. <laughs> Listen, I gotta go. I'll see you later. Think you're gonna kiss me goodbye? Better not. This thing might be catching. Arthur, I'll risk it. You see, that? you see that? The more I hear, the more I'm convinced that Arthur has a little something on the side. Stanley, Ma, please. I'm gonna take a little walk. Where are you gonna walk? Right behind Arthur. <laughs> Who's there? It's me, Arthur. <coughs> Hello, Arthur. Hi, Eleanor. It's so late, I was wondering if you were going to show up at all. Well, it was kind of hard for me to get out of the house tonight. Oh, well, come on in. How much time have you got? Oh, uh, about an hour. Oh, Artie, you promised to stay two hours tonight. Look, I'm lucky to be here at all. Remember, I'm a married man. Hiya, kid. Hi, Stanley. Huh? I wonder what Arthur's doing so long with that specialist. He's probably getting a thorough going over. <laughs> Stanley, do you think Arthur's improving? He should. He's getting enough practice. <laughs> 
Stanley. <laughs> How do you like my new negligee? I bought it from a man standing outside of Macy's. Oh, that looks great, kid. I swear you bought it from the inside. <laughs> Why don't you go back up to bed, okay? How about you? Aren't you going to sleep? Oh, no. I'm going to wait up and uh, say goodnight to Arthur. Oh. Isn't that nice? Yeah. This is the first time in seven years you showed any feelings for Arthur. It takes a little while to warm up to him. <laughs> now, I know you're not crazy about Arthur, but he really is a good husband. <laughs> and you know it's hard to believe? Yeah, what you just said. <laughs> no. No, uh, that you and Arthur are both alike. Um... You know, I know you're trying to be nice, but do me a favor. Don't ever say that again. Okay. Okay, Stanley. You sure you like me in my negligee? You look beautiful, kid. Oh, I hope it's not too sexy. Oh, I would hate to get Arthur excited in his condition. That's the last thing I would worry about. Good night, Stanley. Good night, kid. What do you say, Captain Midnight? <laughs> Hiya, Stan. How's tricks? I was just going to ask you the same thing. Boy, that's some doctor. Gave you some examination. Three hours, right? Oh, yeah, well, after the regular examination, they sent me to the laboratory. But the other rats? What's that supposed to mean? You want to know what that's supposed to mean? I'll tell you what that's supposed to mean. I'll oh, tell you what that's... Is that you? Yeah. I hope it's something I ain't seen before. Hey, listen to me. Olive is wearing a new negligee. And I'm going to ask her tomorrow how you liked it. And if she don't tell me that you went out of your mind, I'm going to tie a knot in your tongue. <laughs> then I'm going to stuff it down the front of your shirt. Good night. <laughs> no. Nobody turned into a turban. <laughs> Try the UN. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, Stan. Then what happened? Okay. Arthur goes into this apartment. I mean, and there is this sensational girl with this incredible build. I don't understand it. I couldn't believe it. What is a girl like that doing with somebody that looks like Arthur? Well, you know, there are girls who actually go for ugly guys. Uh, That's why they get their kicks. If they like ugly, Arthur's got to kick like a mule. <laughs> There's another possibility. Arthur's been going down to that clinic regular. Yeah. Maybe he's having an affair with one of them nurses. You know, maybe you're right. Arthur's body wouldn't shock a nurse. <laughs> I'll bet that's it. Well, I don't care what it is. Whatever it is, I'm breaking it up before Olive finds out. Hey, Stan, you only got circumstantial evidence. I mean, how do you know that Arthur and his girl are really fooling around? Hey, because I heard them. I mean, she said, why are you late? He said, I had a lot of trouble getting out of the house. How long you got? An hour. I was hoping for two. <laughs> what does that sound like? Sesame Street? <laughs> Stan, you ain't got no proof that Arthur's doing what we all know he's doing. Okay. Okay, the next time he goes to this member's apartment, we're going to follow him and nail him. And then what? Then I proceed like the government in phases. What do you mean? <laughs> Phase one, I go to Arthur, and I try to reason with him. Suppose you don't listen to reason. Phase two, I go to the bimbo, and I say, Arthur's wife found out about it. Suppose she don't care. On to phase three. <laughs> Which is? I shove a jack handle up his nose. <laughs> Back to the apartment. You think Arthur's here yet? Sure. He left the house right after dinner with no dessert. You know why? Because his dessert's in here. Wait a minute. Man, we don't want no crime of passion here. No, there's no passion out here. It's all in there. <laughs> I'm going to kill him. Hold on, Stan. You can't go bust it in. Why not? You got to be cool. Like that Columbo on TV. <laughs> he wants to talk to somebody. Just goes up, rings the bell. They say, who is it? He says, right out. It's Columbo. No violence. Okay. Cool. Who is it? Columbo. Open this door. Okay. I oh, listen. 
brother-in-law and uh, that's nice I hurt my foot when I came in the door Stanley I'm gonna ask you something and I want an answer did or did not Arthur have another woman he did not to the best of my recollection <laughs> you are lying Stanley your upper lip is sweating just like when you was a little kid stealing cookies your upper lip always sweat when you lied okay I'll tell you the truth I found Arthur with six women <laughs> Stanley, that would kill even a healthy man. Not the way Arthur was doing it. What are you he talking was, about? He was posing new <gasps> for an art class because he wanted to earn money for Olive's Christmas present. Posing nude? Arthur? Yeah. In one lifetime... I seen talking pictures come in. I seen them land a man on the moon. And now people paying money to see Arthur naked. Where is the human race gonna end, Stanley? If you're counting on Arthur, right here. Stan. Hiya, Bummy. How you doing? Hey, bring that kettle over here, will you, please? Anything you say, Columbo. <laughs> Shut up and pour. Hey, watch. Will you please? That's hot. It's supposed to be hot. Yeah, but that's a foot, not a tea bag. That's enough. That's enough. <laughs> Everything squared away with Arthur? Oh, sure. He's back in his bathrobe for the rest of his natural life. <laughs> well, you gotta admit, that was nice of him, you know, working for all his present. Get any idea what he's gonna do with the money? Well, knowing Arthur, he's probably gonna be buying one of those nude pictures of himself. <laughs> <laughs> what a thing to be given to your own wife. Hey, Olive will love it. Yeah? It'll be the first time she ever saw Arthur naked. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Boy, it's been some nights, Dad. Yeah, and you know the worst part of the whole thing? Yeah? I'm soaking the wrong foot here. <laughs>